was supposed to send two, f two slides and was going to talk about her own slides. So uh, it's supposed to, to last an hour. So 12 by five minutes, it's exactly 60 minutes. So I'm not supposed to talk, okay? <laughs> so if you have any question, you just keep them until the end, okay? Uh, alors, comment on fait? How do we do that? It's easier if you would be in the front, but maybe everybody's here, I don't know. So, okay, I'm going to move the, the screen. Okay. Uh, good evening. I'm presenting the work of Table 1-1. One, one. It's just, is abstract. Okay. So, yeah, firstly, firstly, that's better. That's it's better. okay? Yeah, it's better, okay. I think. I, we, 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 uh, our work have two parts. I'm French speaker, but I'm trying to speak English. <laughs> Thank you very much. In my, there is two parts in this work. Firstly, we have the point one. Uh, the point one, uh, we have recommendation for parents. We have early hour. Ah, it's difficult to write. We have point one. Point, yes, recommendation for parents. We have point one. In the point, point two, we're speaking about cultural perception of sciences must be considered, must be considered, because we think that parents need, uh, need a, 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 some culture in sciences. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Can I speak in French? In French? Okay, merci beaucoup. <laughs> ah, in English, just in English. English, can I speak in French? Oui. Et si nous pensons que les parents ont besoin d'une culture scientifique pour mieux éduquer leurs enfants, pour mieux les pousser à s'intéresser au domaine scientifique, donc si les parents ont une bonne culture scientifique, cela pourrait être une source de motivation pour que les enfants soient orientés dans ce sens. Déjà, sachant, sachant que les, les, les mamans sont généralement avec les enfants ou les papas, ils peuvent développer la culture de regarder les films scientifiques ensemble, les émissions scientifiques ensemble. Ceci peut être un bon facteur du développement d'intérêt de la science au niveau de l'enfant. Bon. Mm. <rire> Et au, au niveau du quatrième point, nous pensons que les parents doivent accompagner leurs enfants dans leur choix. Si les enfants choisissent d'étudier les sciences, certes, c'est difficile. Et les sciences, par endroits, peuvent renfermer l'enfant sur eux. Il faut que les parents soient assez, assez présents pour encourager les enfants, pour les accepter tels qu'ils sont, les encourager et leur permettre de mieux s'insérer dans la société. Donc les enfants, les, les apprenants scientifiques ont vraiment besoin du soutien de leurs parents et nous suggérons que les parents soient disponibles à cet effet. Bon, comme je vais toucher quelques points, ce n'est pas nécessaire de tout lire. Vous lisez déjà, on dit que... Ici, au niveau... En ce qui concerne les recommandations pour instructeurs, nous suggérons que les enseignants intègrent, bon, par Android, ils intègrent et ils peuvent aussi diminuer, donc, qu'ils tiennent compte de l'abstraction des mathématiques, qu'ils sachent comment poser les problèmes mathématiques aux apprenants en fonction des contextes, pour que l'abstraction ne soit pas un facteur, un obstacle pour l'apprenant en sciences ou en mathématiques. Donc, c'est un peu dans ce sens que nous avons émis le second point. En ce qui concerne toujours les recommandations pour les instructeurs, bon, nous suggérons, euh, je peux dire quoi, une éducation, bon, des remises à niveau régulier des enseignants, 
dans l'objectif de les pousser à moins discriminer lors de leurs enseignements, discriminer les, euh, discriminer les domaines, du moins les élèves. Donc peut-être que certains anciens peuvent encourager plus les garçons, moins de filles, de par leur façon de parler, même inconsciemment. Ils peuvent dire, si une fille porte à bras, il va dire, ah, ce n'est pas ton domaine des sciences, c'est fait pour les garçons, et déjà ça peut être une source de démotivation. Donc que les enseignants soient éduqués dans ce sens. Et nous suggérons aussi entre autres, des supports, des financements pour encourager les femmes dans leur éducation scientifique. Déjà, il y a la maternité qui peut poser problème. Les femmes ont besoin de support. Et sachant que les femmes sont aussi sensibles aux problèmes de famille, c'est possible qu'elles aient aussi des difficultés. Donc, le, un, support, un support financier pourrait être la bienvenue. Nous suggérons aussi la création des espaces scientifiques. Des activités scientifiques comme des musées peut-être de sciences où les parents, les anciens peuvent développer des programmes, des activités nécessaires dans la société, peut-être dans les jardins publics durant les week-ends ou dans des musées dans le but de mieux attirer les enfants, de développer davantage la curiosité scientifique des enfants. Donc, et... Nous encourageons aussi la création, du moins est-ce que les enseignants soient tolérants les instructeurs soient tolérants, puisqu'il y a des femmes qui peuvent entrer dans les salles avec les bébés, qui soient tolérées à ce, à ce, à ce niveau, peut-être qui permettent la création des espaces bébés pour les, les mamans. Donc, c'est un peu le résumé de notre travail. Je suis dans les délais. Ok. Thank you very much. This is my phone ringing. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Yes, sure. Good afternoon. I am Fadipa Joseph Olubumi Abidemi from Nigeria. This is, these are the recommendations for instructors and parents. At the personal level, the parents should talk to kids early on gender issues because the parents stay more with the children and they can impact knowledge into them at that level. And whatever they receive at the preliminary level is very important in their career. Parents should write books, especially on gender balance, teach girls on how to negotiate. Naturally, girls don't like to negotiate. So we should teach the girls to negotiate and they should not shine away from responsibilities. Parents should sacrifice for girls. They should try to defend the girls from insecurity. There are insecurities in different places in the parts of the world, so the girl need to be secured. Parents should also avoid stereotyped toys. They should, let, they should buy things that will be exactly what it is, not that they will pretend as if this is what the girl is supposed to follow. There are some parents that don't like science and they tell their children that I don't like science. So parents should not be justified by their failure in STEM. They should encourage the, the, the girls to like STEM. And parents should also teach boys about gender equality. Whenever the, the boys are with, around the girls, they should not feel that they are superior to girls, that this is what the boys can do, this is what the girls can do. No, we should teach them about gender equality. And parents are also supposed to promote self-confidence in girls. And at the social level, the instructors should organize summer schools so that parents, girls, boys can attend. And the, the team encourage this summer school to take place during the break when everybody will be available. Write or read books written by women, not only books written by men. 
creates awareness on equality of boys and girls, the instructors at the social level. Then there should also be media release on television, on WhatsApp, on social media about gender balance. There, there should also be teamwork. Boys and girls should be put together to work together to have a successful goal. And at the institutional level, the government should include gender issues in curriculum. Gender short courses for teachers and parents should be available in all our institutions. There should be role model books. Some of us that are here, we are supposed to be role models, so we should be able to write something to, enc to encourage gender equality. Biography of role models should be available, and we need to write it even at different level. The one that will be suitable for kindergarten, for high school students, for pupils, even at higher level, because we find out that even at higher level, so, uh, girls drop out from institution because they don't see, they don't have a mentor, they don't have a role model. So there should, there should be a biography of role models in the institutions. There should be a regular motiva motivation talk from people in the field. Maybe the institution can organize a kind of talk, a kind of seminar, lecture, whereby somebody that is, that has, that is, a uh, that is vibrant in the field can come and give the lecture and the school, the students will benefit. And finally, there should be gender equity. And in the admission process, in the maybe hostel accommodation, the way we, the way the institution handle the students, there should be gender equity. Thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, I'm Salma Nekzewi, um, I am uh, table uh, leader uh, 3.1. Um, in this uh, few minutes I will try to uh, report uh, discussion in our section group and um, uh, about recommendation for instructor and parents. Uh, first, when I ask the question, based on your experience, what are the initiatives you recommend in the direction uh, for, uh, of uh, instructor and parents for reducing the gender gap in size? Uh, there is a, uh, uh, um, a re reaction, uh, which is, uh, uh, should we uh, um, uh, ask, uh, uh, should we recommend to parents what they uh, should do or uh, shouldn't do? Uh, since uh, they have uh, different cultures and uh, uh, there is no chance to uh, change mentalities. Um, but uh, uh, parents from uh, all over the world uh, Want, uh, they, ha they are similar in the way they um, uh, want the best uh, for uh, uh, their, uh, their children and especially for uh, their daughters. So uh, we uh, suggest, uh, we give uh, them a suggestion uh, and uh, some recommendation. Uh, so in my presentation, um, I try to organize uh, 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 this uh, uh, suggestion um, by the most seated and uh, by group similar or near idea. So among the most uh, seated uh, uh, recommendation, 
information should be disseminated about opportunities of uh, getting a science education um, in several levels, media, parents, uh, children, uh, teachers, uh, and uh, especially parents uh, should know that science is everywhere and it's good opportunity for career. And uh, the sec uh, another um, uh, most among the most cited uh, recommendation, uh, another idea key, which is uh, repeated again and again, is um, uh, invokes a role model of women in science, um, promoting women in teaching at all levels. Teacher should highlight the contribution of women in science, present role models of women in science, invite successful model of women, show women in science jobs. Um, other recommendation is about equal treatment for boys and girls. Avoid stereotype, like that's not good for girls, you can't do it. And uh, more than that, uh, switch stereotypes and give encouragement for girls. You are good in this. And um, another point evoked is the parents should participate and bring their children to science activities, workshop, picnics, open days. For uh, teacher and educator, there is some also recommendation, special recommendation. Educators should track who they are calling in the class to ensure every student has a chance to participate. And they should encourage the speaking of girls in class. Um, because girls uh, don't participate like boys in classes. Training more science activities. Um, another recommendation is uh, to let the student understand their competence, their competence and support girls to do scientific choice in secondary school. And uh, there is um, points that um, uh, um, created polemics like use more and more inclusive English, language as uh, like she. It <laughs> uh, and uh, single sex classes in college, secondary school. And there is also a recommendation which seem, uh, seems to be uh, contradictive. Uh, always changing the group in class, mixing girls and boys. And in this uh, two uh, recommends, recommendation, uh, there is a, a point, uh, 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 the, uh, the similar, uh, the similar uh, arguments is uh, to um, uh, make uh, girls uh, release on their self. The, her, uh, um, other suggestion, which is uh, more or less uh, seated, normalize failure. Make sure that there is there is a gender gap in books. I recognize uh, when there is, when uh, um, we make the discussion that uh, all participants are um, worried about uh, uh, gender gap uh, in uh, educational system and uh, in books in. Uh, uh, um, okay, <laughs> finally, <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. We are come from the table four. I think that we have 23. Uh, people can share with us uh, together. I think it's uh, for for me. It's uh, more in make a summary because the group one, two, three is almost the same. So I just uh, highlight uh, in the 
recommendation as an instructor for to reduce the gender gap is uh, strengthen to leadership for boys and also girls. But for all of the uh, problem that mentioned before uh, by the others group, that we uh, gender awareness training uh, educator of our instructor starting from uh, the kindergarten until university. But and then for this, uh, as a parent, it's also the same, but maybe we should aware then what, when helping a girls, for example, we always should find way to inform about good practice and also about success about uh, women. And the highlight also is just gender awareness training need for parents to boy and girls starting from home. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Did you do uh, as yes. instructor? Did you do everything yet? Okay. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you did it real fast. Three minutes. Three minutes. Less than three minutes. Less than two minutes. Two minutes. Hello, no, no, I don't know how to stop it. Annually. Okay. So now we're going to. The second question, which was about uh, institutions, laboratories, departments, I take the opportunity to thank, uh, what's your name, to thank Rudy, what's your, how do you say your name, for the first slide, okay? So I'm using your first slide yeah. and the last one too. Okay, I would like to thank you, okay? Okay. Alba, who is Alba? Oh, you want to use the blackboard? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Is there anything to? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Haven't started yet. Yeah. Whenever you want to start That's taking okay. the time. Yeah. So good afternoon, all my colleagues. I'm going to change the style of the presentation. I'm going to allow you to read the slide. And I have the pleasure and privilege to talk to 22 colleagues. Uh, most of them were very strict on saying that most of the listed uh, topics there should be mandatory. Please raise your hand. My colleague that was always there. So if you want to discuss with her why multidisciplinary master program to increase women participation are needed, extra courses promoting inclusion based on one's capacities, motivational program strategies to train the counselors on how to navigate into financial and personal challenges, discourage negative attitudes uh, towards career decisions, taking advantage of connections to equalize the mandatory retirement age. And I have a great initiative that I just read in one of the posters, Silver Haired Woman by Mira, respect integration in projects before uh, and after retirement means to use their expertise helping younger women in their careers and develop procedures or mechanisms for voluntary involvement of retired scientists. I think we are losing the uh, human resources that we can um, uh, help get some help and new ideas. Awareness to change biases, changing institutional structure, promoting tenure committees, changing how we reward and value people's work, extracurricular contributions. And if we go on on this list, have you read it all? Okay, keep going. Is there anything new that you haven't heard before? Is there anything new? Just raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Can I go to the next slide? because my time is running. Please check the next slide and let me know if there is anything new. Yeah, so, okay. Anything new? Yeah, we can turn the light if you want.
So I'm just going to use the language that we use to communicate. So we can either think in terms of mathematical terms or in terms of physics. And in physics, we think that we are particles and we are waves. And we found a way to introduce a connector that was energy. We know there is a momentum, and we know there is a wavelength. And we know that the momentum is equal to h bar and the uh, wave number. And this is what I think this is missing. What is this connector that is going to bring us together? And in terms of this expression of detecting the difference, everyone knows that if we are checking here velocity or we are thinking this is gender, uh, we have a symmetry in time of all the discrete areas that we can consider here to introduce that this is going to be velocity or gender in terms of times in a delta t. So I think what you're reading there is what we have been repeating in time. Gender climate, gender difference, gender discrimination, gender plus something, something else. So what is going to be the new integrative way of looking at gender that is going to be in the report? And that report should take into account that when we talk about science and engineering, we have to ask the question. And the question is, let me, I wrote it here. Is it going to be a permutation or a combination? What is the difference between permutation and combination, my dear colleagues? What is? It's order. We have faced a permutation where order matters. If Carlos, Alba, Natalia, Joseph, Jim are applying for a top position in the university, we know who is going to be taken out. And that permutation is going to show that gender in terms of the number of people that we have to accommodate and the number of positions we have to accommodate has a specific expression that you probably all of you have in your mind right now. The permutation of... <laughs> and it hasn't worked for us. But there is another one, which is a combination. And what is the important about combination? Order doesn't matter. So in terms of physics, we have to find the connector. And in terms of quantum mechanics, if I have to write it quickly, 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 because I know it's only one minute, <laughs> science has also another barriers that we haven't discussed here, cultural barriers age barriers, and for us, many of us who are not from the European countries, a language barrier. And gender, in my table, is a word that not all the countries recognize. And this is important to take into account, and this is going to be my last contribution. I want to hear from, uh, sorry, this is the cultural uh, range of the spectrum, whether gender is really a word that all the cultural use. And there is another one. We need representatives of a younger generation. Increase youth participation, partnerships, your youth uh, voices. I want to hear them because there were students that they said they want to speak about, about issues that they have been facing too. And I hope they can be one of the connectors that we need here because uh, my guess in the table and through the whole conference is we have been focused on one age. I'm closer to my 50s and we still have people going through their 15s, 18s, 20s and we need to understand what are they facing too. And increase cultural understanding of science and technology. This is my last message, I promise. We are talking about men and women. But believe me, technology, we're embedded in technology. Next phase is going to be human versus machines, robots, cyborgs, post-humans. Thank you. in the room just went up. This is brilliant. Um, so this presentation breaks the mold because it says because. Apparently one of the most persuasive words in any language is because. I've um, put together things. Place someone in 
in the institution, lab, or the environment to whom complaints can be made, and who acts on them, and who is definitely a woman, but I think there was the intention that a woman who is responsive, not a woman who just cuts it off, because sometimes complaints are dismissed as trivial, they aren't followed up, um, he was just winking at you, there was no harm intended, um, maybe the vice chancellor is the one who responds, or the head of the institution in one case wanted to use your IT, ICTP grant for something else. This was quite serious, this discussion, and it ran through three tables, um, but um, protection from violence without compromising education was a major topic at this table. Um, particularly because some universities represented in the groups coming through close at 7 p.m. for girls, but boys have access all the time. Labs are closed to girls because there might be harassment. Library um, access is closed to girls because there might be harassment. Girls may not be allowed to go and get books from the library, um, except at um, campuses where um, they are specifically for girls only, but girls still go a, a home at a certain time. That means that boys can study in groups, but girls are at home alone and struggling with the textbook. So the policy might be freedom for boys, freedoms for boys, must be freedoms for girls. In one case, there was cell phone uh, confiscation. Cell phones are taken away, um, and that's why that's a recommendation. Um, and these are well-intentioned to protect girls, but what they're doing is they're taking their ability to get an education down. University policy should assist women to get grants, of course, but the reason for this is money does give power and a voice. You are nothing until you got that big grant for a conference and now everybody wants to be involved. There were definitely cases of isolated women, one woman PhD among eight um, male PhDs, and um, there were suggestions of making an informal network across departments then formalizing it, then using it to gain access, because Ms. Gledhill is not invited, but Dr. Gledhill, um, we didn't know she was a woman, right? Um, at co-educational campuses, things turn out to be tougher, um, so things need to change, because in some countries, women are only succeeding at all female campuses. So these are institutions that need to make changes. Many women find that they, um, they have to leave at the end of the masters because they are harassed to give up so that men get the scholarships, or at least that was the understanding there. And because the PhD is a one-to-one -one relationship, and if there aren't many women supervisors, then the harassment may be more severe there. Um, so um, there's a recommendation for this reason to retain and promote women onto the staff to increase the number of supervisors who are unthreatening. Um, and subsequently, because women leave the country to get a PhD, provide resources for them. Help the confidence of the girl child and um, there were a number of recommendations that came through that were for in individuals. And I know that we can, we can help individuals as well. Words are important. Teach yourself to dare. Use the fact that I'm the only woman here to get resources. And um, great motivators who came through in these three groups said, we are the pioneers paving the way for others. We are the ones making the changes. Should do. Uh, first, 
almost all of us agree that we should have clear, transparent policies and uh, uh, the rules we should follow, written somewhere, public somewhere. And uh, there was idea that uh, certification, sorry? So, uh, I'm sorry, this, do you hear me now? Yeah, I hope you have heard me also. So, anyway, so the, uh, it was suggestion that uh, certification like uh, Athena Swan uh, could be very useful. Uh, and then maybe to suggest the European Union Council to, to accept uh, only the proposals uh, from the institution who have that certification. And certification process also uh, force men and women to consider what should be put in the documents when it's serious, then they, they know. So what should be in the documents? Clear anti-harassment policy and line of action. Then diversity plan and targets with financial consequences if not met, which means you give somebody money to have a project, if he pro or she promised to have gender balance, but he didn't do it or she didn't do it, have a financial consequences. And insist on budget for gender uh, equity, diversity, inclusiveness promotions. Also, the, the big point was to change the way evaluation and promotions are made. So uh, one idea to, to have the unconscious bias training for every member of the committee, but also to have dedicated person in the committee who take care uh, that all our, our, our plans have, have been done. And also uh, we, we strongly advocated that assessment should not be just been counting. Uh, one of the good examples is just that uh, a candidate should nominate best five papers. And transparent hiring, which means uh, we would like to see uh, promotion statistics published. How many when men, how many women have uh, been applied for positions and who got it. And uh, uh, the, the next big point is, so the second point is to develop strategies for undergraduates which are sensitive to local cultural context. Uh, we have realized that the situation in India, for example, is completely different than in, in, in Europe, and which means that we would like to, to monitor well-being and progress of feel, uh, feel, uh, female academicians. Uh, we believe that uh, men must be involved in identifying barriers and uh, uh, addressing them. Uh, so, uh, career mentoring, and uh, there was a talk about it today, that it is very important to, to, to identify role models which are appropriate for uh, some level. So, if you are talking to high school students, then maybe you should give an example of, 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 of somebody who is at the very beginning of, of uh, her or his career. Uh, good uh, practice is uh, re-entry grants, which exist in some countries. And uh, I've heard yesterday so that the Imperial College has a policy that year after maternity leave, uh, you are... Uh, you have permission just to research and do not have teaching load. So also, uh, it is a big problem in some countries, paid parental leave, not so parental leave. And uh, there is also a problem that, uh, uh, that we don't have a child-friendly working environment, especially during the summer break and, uh, and provide safe laboratories. Uh, you have just uh, elaborated it. And at the end, the third point, I think it's important. Uh, institutions should invest in public engagement, uh, to co should communicate uh, and raise awareness of science study, especially because of the uh, female uh, scientists. We have heard here that it is very important, that it was very important for many of them to have support of family. And so families should know what we are doing and families should be informed. It is important from many aspects to, to, to be visible in media. Uh, we get money for that. Uh, if people do not know what we are doing, then there is no money and institutions should show that we have female scientists and they should be visible. Thank you. It's, it's 
everybody's right. Three, two. Four, two is missing. Aha, uh -huh. well, okay, it's not perfect. Okay, uh, well, I don't know what to do. Four, two, who is four, two? It's you. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I suggest yeah, I if you... I, I know, I know, it's just an error. I mean, nothing... No, I, I, I do it now. Well... Just a different subject. Doesn't. Okay, so next person. Wow, wow, well, everything is. Okay. So, next person is. One, three is missing again. Wow. Well, Natalia? Natalia? No, but they're missing one. Oh, they're missing one. Again. I don't know. There's a yeah. I, can I don't know a gap. So you could start. Okay, I can start. Okay. Sorry, but there's a gap. Uh, apparently, I don't know what happened. Oh, a gap in the slides. Huh? A gap in the slides. All oh, right. Okay. Not, uh, not uh, just in the slides. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a gap that we're here for. So, also in the slides. <laughs> you know. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's my presentation. So a little bit like Alva said, it was very difficult to make a summary because. Most of the things that were said on the table, like it's things that we've been saying for years to each other. And many of them were actually already in the report as suggestions. So I tried to highlight the ones that weren't perhaps explicitly written in the suggestions in the report. So the first one was something like manifestos for gender equality so that institutions perhaps like, oh, this was the institutional level, like the organization level. So more like UNESCO level governments, societies, et cetera, et cetera. So that societies should have explicit manifestos for gender equality. Many do not do. So that's one. Um, that share best practices and activities that can be organized. So specifically like different websites of societies can say to universities or people who are interested, this is something that you can do, like a course or a school or a summer school, and this is how you can do it and even have like presentations and like materials that people can use uh, to do these activities. And of course, share the results of this project with all the institutions that can be interested. Uh, in terms of leadership, um, one thing that was mentioned is, of course, we want to increase the number of women in leadership position, but we have to make a lot of emphasis, and it's like not any women, um, women who are allies, who are really driven to this cause, because otherwise it doesn't matter, like you have a woman, if they are not going to put programs for gender equality. And these allies sometimes could also be men, because we talked about the fact that if it's only women, we already have a lot of work at our institutions, like being the only few women. So if we only always have women in these committees, it's even more work for us. So we have to search for allies, both men and women. Okay, uh, in terms of programs, I think that's essentially been said and done sometimes, but yeah, grants, positions, fellowships, specific for women, and eliminate age requirements for grants and other programs. So I move here. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. I think I'm going to be done soon. Oh, that's okay. And, uh, okay. And so there was this thing for family accommodations that perhaps was to be included more in the first part. But because this was about organization, this was about loving in government. Because in many countries, it's still the case that children go to school only half of the day like from eight to 12 or from two to six. And of course, this stops women from being able to have full-time careers because in most cases, arranging childcare after hours is very complicated. So governments have to be aware that this is a barrier for including more women, not only in STEM, in the workforce, full stop. 
okay? Um, and so uh, the red ones were like the ones who were really like the most um, strong recommendations, which is all these things have to be written into law or in some of the ways be enforceable. Because in many cases we have loads of recommendations in web pages of institutions and so on, but recommendations that cannot be enforced are good for nothing. Um, in terms of outreach, that's very much been said, but it was mentioned a lot, outreach programs. And going back to government, well, create laws and affirmative action. And I think one of the most important comments that was made, if we want to reach gender equity or gender parity in STEM or anywhere, you do have to include more women and hire more women, but at a higher rate than men, because otherwise, mathematically, it's impossible if we just like continue 50, 50, 50, 50, because, well, you know, that's gonna take a lot of time, you know, so to, to reach, to change a system where already a lot of men are already in the system. So that was one of them. Another very important one that they say is improve pay for science teachers, because in many countries it's the case that you don't have people studying science anymore. So you're not going to have people, women studying science if you don't have people studying science. So that was another thing that was um, raised. And then require specialist committees systematically check laws, practices, and policies for equity and diversity. And the last one, which was mentioned several times, and I think is particularly important, is literal propaganda, publicity campaigns. Because it's impossible that in this day and age we still come and say, but what about men? And like, we don't want to hurt their feelings. So I think we need propaganda to say, this change is not only for women, this change is also for men. And men and women have to be convinced that it's for the good of society, not only for the good of women. And that's it, thank you. I could continue. Next person. I have to. Oh, okay, okay. But like, Carolyn. So I chose to synthesize this material into how societies and professional societies, what I had in mind, can actually act and make change. And I hope that this is useful so that you know how to better engage your professional societies. As someone who now sits in a professional society, I do want more members to come to me, but it helps when they know how I can actually take action. So I broke it down into the five vehicles that professional societies have and serve. And that is as standard bearers and standard setters for the profession. And it's just recognizing that they have a very public place and what should they be doing with that public visibility. The second is that organizations, if you think of them as some sort of umbrella, they can push information to members and to members that are dispersed across a very large geographic area. So that's spreading a lot of information. Um, third, they can take information up from their members. So they're this umbrella. It now comes up from many different points and so from many different views. So they do serve as this great place that's going to um, collect different ideas than you just might say within your own university. Um, fourth, they can connect across members. So if they're serving as an umbrella and members are here, I picture the line coming up and then going back down. They serve as this central spoke that connects people at different universities and institutions that might not otherwise find each other. And finally, um, what societies are able to do is collaborate across with other societies. And only then am I seeing that uh, you really have the opportunity to influence policy making bodies. So from the information that um, we gathered from our different groups, I gave one example of each of these. And then in the paper printout that um, we give to Colette, I've got everything there. So if anyone from my group is like, my idea didn't make it, I was just trying to uh, keep things tidy on a slide. All right, so as far as standard bearers and standard setters, obviously society should have their internal policies have a component for gender equity and state how that will be implemented into leadership, committees, conferences, publications, and awards. 
um, which we've already heard from other groups. In terms of what societies can do to push information from their organization down to their members, societies are a great place to hold toolkits. We always are saying, well, who has good information on um, training for implicit bias or on showing a conference how to have um, good processes for parents? Um, so societies are a place where they can hold that information. Um, Toolkits could include any of the following that I've listed there. What's been really fun since I've been here is um, as you walk out the bottom, like when there's a fire drill out the very bottom door, um, there's a, a coffee area and there's, um, in Italian, taped to the table, the manifesto of non-hostile communication for science. Societies are a place that can take that document and help uh, push that out as toolkits. And, um, Monica, who's here, has, transla has gotten us the English translation if anyone's interested in that. Um, so the third thing societies do is take information from their members. And professional societies are in a unique position to hear the concerns from members across a geographic region. And they therefore have a responsibility to do something with the information that comes up. And this is exactly why harassers can move around. Right, That university didn't know about it. The harasser moved somewhere else. The, 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 the society is in a place when those complaints come up to start connecting those dots. And so I urge you to push your societies to serve in that role. Um, but it's difficult, and so many aren't doing that. Um, if you take information, you have a responsibility to have a plan for acting on such information, um, particularly information from disenfran disenfranchised groups. Um, and then uh, in order to connect me across members, which is something else society can do, they can serve to foster networks like early career people or women in a certain field. Um, otherwise, how do women at smaller disparate universities and colleges actually find those that they could be working with? And finally, something else societies can do is they collaborate across societies and with policy bodies. So societies serve as the point of contact, often for government and policy making bodies when they need subject matter expertise. So those societies need to have the names of women who are subject matter experts so they can pass them on when policy making bodies ask them for information. Okay, so I'm going to summarize some ideas that came, I came up in my table for three. Uh, so organizations should revisit vision, mission, goals, and objectives, and include, in case they do not exist, diversity principles in them. Also have chapter for women and or gender issues. Ensure that conferences have a reasonable percentage of women as speakers and as members of the scientific committee, not only the organizer committee. Uh, promote women representation on awards committees and prizes nominations. Provide ethical charters including diversity and harassment. Provide access to information and support services for sexual harassment impart mentoring schemes for students and early career staff. For example, when I was very young, I didn't know how to apply to a grant, for example, in the case of my PhD and so on. And finally, the, uh, this is a point that came up in every group and is to disseminate the idea that this must be an effort of everyone, not only women. Thanks. Do you have this plug in your computer?
about recommendation for institution, uh, uh, there is gender policy strategy is important uh, start point. It must be effectively, it's important, implemented and monitored. But this is not enough because we have uh, a second point what we call uh, gender audit. Uh, we, we should assess and check the institutionalization of gender, of gender equality in organizations, including in their uh, policies, programs, projects, and so on. Another point is to introduce, uh, 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 sorry, yeah. policies, yeah. this is about gender quota, to introduce policies and laws mandating gender quota, and this will depend on countries. For some countries, it's important to mandate this uh, gender quota, and the main aim of these laws is breaking the glass ceiling, which prevents women from uh, advancing uh, into top corporate position. The other point is to uh, uh, f uh, to uh, uh, convince uh, women uh, to, uh, to to be in a committee for women in every scientific uh, organization. And for this, I believe that we should have a, a strategy toward women to convince them to be in committee to... Uh, sorry. And the, the, another point, is transparency as tool for gender uh, equality. Gender related data has to be reliable, get the real situation. Recruitment and selection procedure should be transparent. And we need transparent in uh, awarding grants. Another point is to exhibit of portraits of women scientific in education institution and in international uh, organization. And also to, uh, to have some portrait of women scientists in school textbooks. This uh, make marketing science to girls with soft strategy while taking into account the country's specificity and making it sound cool. This idea was from a participant from, uh, from uh, Philippines. And when he, he exposed this idea, uh, he, it was very funny because he, he was uh, talking about uh, uh, presenting girl uh, sexy and we, and uh, it was very funny. Maybe he can say more things about this. And design strategies to convince women to join women scientific, uh, scientific, uh, scientist network, increase women representation uh, at all uh, levels, Selection process should be gender sensitive and the recruitment committee composed of female and male representative. Increase the representation of women uh, at higher levels and the leadership position uh, uh, in universities. Also at university level, allocate uh, suitable hours for teaching duties and reduce teaching uh, load for women having children. And grant the maternity leave for both parents. And the last point is to assign a representative of the gender champion, champion uh, 
uh, network. And I just, what I want to say that as women involved in this gender gap, we have a responsibility and we should uh, make effort and uh, design strategies to go toward these women. Because sometimes when we ask women to join network or to do something for women, they, they don't want to be involved. So we have to do something in this way. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully I'll keep this short as it's the last one of the, the day. Uh, this is uh, looking at the uh, recommendations for the, the national organisations uh, and, and above, as I've put it here. I've distilled the information. There's quite a lot of discussion from the table and hopefully I haven't distilled it too much that I've, I've lost some of the information. But uh, the first off is the, the recommendations. These are sort of fairly general comments that... Uh, for the recommendations. I think some of them need to be a bit more specific and concrete. There's some very nice statements there, uh, but they actually, if we want to make them recommendations, they just need to be uh, tidied up a bit. Uh, and we've also heard some, lots of great recommendations and, and initiatives, but uh, it would be good to actually see them linked uh, with the, the data and the strategy from the, the project. And it has been, uh, someone else has mentioned about uh, following through and making sure that whatever recommendations are uh, looked at, that there's a way of actually doing some level of, of feedback uh, and, and following up that, completing that loop, uh, not just letting them happen and, and, and disappear. If there's a way of, of following up, that would be, uh, that's, that should be recommended. And if we're talking about ob objectives and recommendations, if we can make them, them quantitative where appropriate, uh, that would be uh, a, a good thing. And then I, I think it was Caroline who was uh, t talking a bit more about the, the structure of, of, the, of the societies and, and what they can and, and can't do. I, so one of the, the recommendations is for, say, the, the unions or, or national, I, national bodies is to take the recommendations and make them more specific uh, for their context and culture. So that's the recommendation, is that for each of these, these bodies that they're actually taking the recommendations and, and as I say, making them uh, more specific for their, their context. Some of the more specific recommendations that came out uh, of our table uh, is really for, for the national organisations is to advocate at the top levels. So again, talking to, to governments, talking uh, to the national bodies, uh, making sure that uh, you're actually advocating for, for whether it's the paternity uh, leave or, or whatever it is that you're actually advocating at the top levels. And also to advocate for equity across organisations within the remit. There's, so there's a lot of good practice and there's a lot of uh, good work that's, that's out there. I, so what the, the national organisations can perhaps do is actually try and make sure that that good practice is, is evenly spread across their organisations. Uh, a few people have mentioned the, the creating or supporting a women's network. Again, if they haven't already got a, a, a women's network, that, uh, that's a, a good thing to, to do. To advocate for broader measures of evaluation is, was something which, which came up. And also this idea of, of working from the uh, taking what uh, working from the, from the, the, the ground up and, and having those links with the with, with individual members is 
being able to take local good practice and actually uh, scale it up and again share and, uh, the good practice uh, within your organisation. And then with the, with the unions, I mean, that part of this project is all about sharing the good practice and the database is obviously about sharing good practice, but make it the recommendation that the unions essentially continue to talk to one another and share that good practice and the, and the recommendations. So that, that was all I had to say. I am wondering sort of how these recommendations uh, play out within the group. I mean, for example, one of the recommendations was not having age limits on grants. I know that the age limits are designed to, uh, for particular reasons, and as an alternative to not having age limitations, one could do uh, what was being described yesterday afternoon by Jean-Pierre. So uh, I, I don't know quite what to make of this as a recommendation uh, of not having age limitations on grants. I mean, are these just things we are tossing out to talk among ourselves? Are these things we are going to be saying Yeah, okay, Marie Francoise. Yeah, I mean, right now, it's not really a synthesis of the recommendations. I mean, it's just a presentation of whatever of the 12 groups have been proposing. So it does not mean that everything that we've seen now is going to be part of the final recommendations of the project. So I think you have to trust that we, we have a committee which is uh, running the project with representatives of the, all the uh, unions, and it's this committee which is at the end going to write recommendations. So we are going to try to be inspired, but obviously, I mean, this is more or less what everything was said around the table. It cannot be the case that everybody agrees and all the partners agree, so it's just material that we are having, that we are going now, well, I don't know, I mean, uh, <laughs> now Igre and uh, Colette has, has to put them together. In any case, I think we, we should really be, be clear that uh, there are some recommendations that are coming from the task of the project because we produce some information or some suggestion. Okay, so that will be part of the recommendations. Now there are also recommendations that are coming from the fact that all together we are here, we, we manage to, to have all this big community of co people coming from so different uh, disciplines and uh, countries, and they made the list we've seen. So we are going to try to get something out of it. It's not the same thing as something coming from the task, because in the task we have been really studying deeply some problems. Here it's just like, you know, 100 people talking during two hours and that's it. But I think nevertheless it's interesting and we can say some things, maybe. But right now it's kind of uh, still a little uh, chaotic, I think, of course. I mean, it cannot be different, but, but we, we need to organize it and then to, to decide about it, I think. Mm. Age limit, you know, like Jean-Pierre said, there's uh, something age limit. Jean-Pierre said, uh, Jean-Pierre Bourguignon said that, you know, if you had a child, you can extend the age limit by 18 months. And it's, I mean, they do it at the European level, but it's really done elsewhere. You know, you just have the amount where you were gone, which means six weeks in some countries, four months in some other countries. You just nothing so you may you know try to push a bit forward i don't know if people are going to agree on that but that's going toward that thing you know
I wanted to ask Caroline, who talked about like following I, some something. Oh, there for societies. Okay, for societies, you said like having a. I, I don't know how you word it, but a like having a list of people who were had been fired for harassment so that they couldn't go to another institution. That a. I don't know. I mean, is it that we are trying to punish people for life or we are trying to get people to change and be reinserted in another institution? Plus, I don't know how you would do that and at an international level. With, and also, I mean, in a legal way also. I would like you to comment on that. So there's currently a project in the United States called um, Project Callisto, and um, different organizations could join it, um, either universities or, for example, um, societies. And when a complaint comes to them through, usually in the US, it's the Human Resources Office, they take a complaint, that gets entered into this system, and, the, and it's locked. It's a locked um, complaint. Um, and when there is a match, and a complaint comes in against the same person in other places, then they are connected and they are shared with the organization where the person's affiliated. So for example, the American Mathematical Society has some people who are harassers at conferences. Um, grad students have complained that you know they're being hit on and followed around and so on. And so that organization, you have one person who hears it once and who's like, I'm, I'm so sorry, but why don't you just sit on the other side of the room? As opposed to um, a, a, a consistent pattern, and now they can say, We're, you're not allowed at this conference anymore. So something like that would be a use and application. Or at least what I Hi, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on, on that idea. Uh, last night we had a conversation during dinner about the fact that a lot of these issues sometimes are not globally handled, but they might be handled at the level of institutions and they, in the U it depends on the gravity of the issue. They might be handled in different ways. There are practices called restorative justice practice and a variety of others where people are addressed um, and you know issues are trying to be resolved at an institutional level. I think what Carolyn's point was is that societies can um, offer an unsiloing effect rather than people being siloed in their own institutions and not knowing the fact that these organizations are umbrellas can create a sort of communication and create a system where these things are more in the open and people have different resources to deal with them. As I move the talking stick to the next person, I'd like to comment that it must be fair. Um, was in, I was in a meeting where um, somebody said, when we were discussing sexual harassment, the victim is always right. And the woman next door said, my, my son was unfairly um, accused and taken out of his class in front of everyone else, kept out for two semesters while the case was heard and then exonerated. I think Sylvain made a point that, of course, we don't want to punish somebody for life. I mean, even criminals, when they come out of jail, have to be given a second chance. The main thing is to send out a signal to all the rest of society, that, and, uh, including men and women, uh, just that uh, this should not happen again. Uh, also, referring to the age thing, I think that phrase should be reworded because grants are certainly given out in age brackets, I mean, you have early career, so you can't have a 60-year-old person applying for an early career program. Because there are different allotments. I think it's, it's, it's for young people. Yes. But yeah, well, I got my PhD when I was uh, 40. Three. <laughs> that, that's true. 
uh, but I, of, I didn't have the chance to apply for a, a Young Investigators Award. But in China, we have relaxed that for the difference between men and women for the Young Investigators Award. So the women, it used to be 35 across the board, but now for women, it's been raised to 40. Uh, so that's an improvement, I think. Okay. Yeah, I want to make a precision about that summary. So it is the case that in some countries, uh, the, the brackets are defined on age and not on like how many years after your PhD and so on. And that was kind of partly precisely the issue. Plus on top of that, I do agree that, you know, if you get your PhD at 45 and that's the age for whatever reason that happened to your life, that's the age you're starting a career, well, you should have access to start a career at 45 or 50 or whatever, because a lot of women like you know have children before or are in like relationships where like they're not being supported and so on and so maybe they will start their careers later so I think it's important to consider that too. There's the stop the clock policy um, for children. Oh, I thought I was skipping because I, I was going back to the other to the other subject and I think it also depends well at an international level I think it's a little harder to do because there are very different laws and cultures and things. It's very it's complicated. I understand that of having something that is private, because I thought you were saying, like, publicly going, like, the Me Too kind of thing at the level of the society. That's what I thought you meant. Anyway, but I also know that there are, like, different ways of trying to handle these cases, like whether it would be good to try to reinsert the harasser to, I don't know, in a way that wouldn't behave in that way anymore or something. So that it's not that you just want to get rid of that person, but you want to reformat that person somehow. I don't know if it's possible though, but there are like different ways of handling these problems. that the harasser may not have realized that the behavior was problematic. So just even like identifying that. 